Hi, I'm Queen Yu with Bold Point News. I'm with Tamara Williamson, an acclaimed musician, artist, author, and podcaster. Born and raised in London, England, she signed to a major label in the 90s and went on to tour in Europe and North America as a solo artist and with her band, Mrs. Torrance. Her award-winning musical, The Breakup Diet, received rave reviews at the Toronto and Edmonton Fringe. Her song, Still Here, was featured on CBC's Q. She has just finished writing a new book, which will hit stores in March. Tamara, welcome to Bullet Point News. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Tamara, you're going to be performing at the Winter Song Music Festival in Stouffville on Friday, January the 20th. What can the audience expect at your show? Well, I've got a, a bunch of uh, incredible musicians together and we're going to be playing uh, as Mrs. Torrance. Uh, so we were a band in the 90s that was signed to a major label. We're very loud. It's very fast. It's like really like grunge almost, if you remember that era of music. So it's going to be really fun and really furious. So <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. I'm playing with some like heavy Judy players. Um, and this guy called Grant Boyer is, uh, has joined the band and he's, he's like, he's really doing well under his own name. So it's kind of like a super band and Mrs. Torrance is like fast. So yeah, it's really exciting. On Saturday, the 21st, you're going to interview Canadian radio icon, Jeff Woods. How do you feel about that? And is there something specific you would like to learn from him? Hmm. Huh. You know, I've been listening to I've been listening to his book on audio, like on Audible, and because um, he sent it to me, and I I just uh, while I've been doing other things, I've been listening to it, and it's really uh, he's had an incredible life. Um, what would I learn from Jeff? I I don't think it's I don't think it's a learning scenario as much as we've had kind of in a weird way similar lives, going through the same circles. And um, it's just going to be fun talking to him about some of the things he's done, uh, some of the people he's met. Like, you know, he interviewed Jeff Buckley's mother. And so for me and Jeff, for instance, Jeff Buckley would be one of the most influential and incredible artists to come out of the late 90s, uh, early 2000s. And then unfortunately he died. But listening to... Um, to the to the book Jeff Woods's book you know was I didn't know he was a huge fan of Jeff Buckley and then when I listened I was like oh my god we're 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 so alike in that way so we share many interests I'm really excited for him to talk to the audience really and tell the audience about his life because it's been pretty spectacular <laughs> There are a variety of topics that you discuss on your podcast. Is there anything you would like your audience to think about or do after listening to your shows? Uh, my podcast? Well, <laughs> I do I do different series of stuff uh, on my podcast. And one of them is about probably the most kind of, uh, it, maybe, I don't know if it's the most interesting, but one that I've taken a lot of pride in is one called therapy, where I do <laughs> open therapy sessions and, and a lot of people really dislike them. They're like, oh, we don't need to know your stuff. And But what I found out about therapy is that we all have very similar problems and issues um, and we're all not as unique as we like to think. So I feel like therapy is something that we'd all like to do, but we don't maybe spend that kind of money on ourselves, especially when we have issues. That's where we don't spend money. Like we go out and buy alcohol or whatever to escape our issues, but we don't spend the same money on having a heart to heart with someone uh, every once in a while. So therapy, if I had the money, I would hopefully do more of it, but it's it's been really, really um, an incredible podcast to do. And then I've had so many people when I go and play shows, I had so many people come up to me and say they love the therapy podcast because they feel like they get so much out of it because, like I said, we're all quite similar. Um, 
yeah so I, you know you either love them or you hate them but i'm doing them with the best intentions right so uh, so i'm really um i guess i'm proud of them yeah why do you think the breakup diet resonates with so many people <laughs> the breakup diet um resonates because if we've all been through breakups uh and the breakup diet is about a breakup that took place like there's the big one that some people if they're lucky avoid but if you break up with the the marital home or the family it can hit you on so many levels that are so incredibly deep that you didn't even know you had issues with um so I think that the breakup diet taps into people again, go, oh my God, that's, that's exactly how I felt when I was going through this big breakup or, you know, why, why is love so torturous for us? Like it's such a big, big thing in our lives. Um, but I think some of it taps, you know, is about our childhood and our childhood trauma and our abandonment issues or our, um yeah so many things that we carry from our childhood so the breakup diet is just relatable i also i think in a very clever way <laughs> which which was not really an accident i don't use any names in it i he is him uh she is her and i am me and so there's no then dave came into the room and then dave took me down this you know like that that would get boring but because i just never use any names in it i think that people mentally can put their partner into the spot of he and uh again it sort of becomes everyone's story what are some of the challenges that you have had to overcome in your career myself <laughs> no i haven't had that many challenges come at me i've had the odd annoying or hard person to deal with but not that many like i've really enjoyed working with people and i think i'm i'm fairly easy going to work with but i i can i have a huge left foot i can say the wrong thing especially when it's really important so um yeah, I mean, usually it's been my, my myself is the problem, which again is why I'm trying to become a better person. It's the that's just a lifelong struggle, really, isn't it? For all of us, I think, is just ourselves, not other people. Um, yeah, so that that would be it. What advice would you give to a young person who would like to start a career in music? Well. Uh, my advice would be that if you're not, you, you know, basically there's there's that famous story where is you know a ballerina is dancing and someone comes in and says you're not good enough and they go oh no I'm not good enough and they give up. I mean, it, being a musician is going to be that there's no choice. Even if people tell you you're not good enough, you're there's no choice about you wanting or needing to do it. Um, it's sort of a, a compulsion for people, I think. Um, and so you have to really, you know, develop your thick skin, which is really hard if you're a sensitive kind of person. But um, my advice is go for it. I, I don't think success needs to be monetized, monetized. Like success comes from just having greatness you know, in your life, which could be just really, really doing a great local show where you really nail it and people in, out there in the audience are really excited about your music. It doesn't have to be a, a huge thing, but it just feels so good playing music. And if you love music, then get as much of it into your life as you can. So yeah, just, I suppose that would be my advice. Just go for it. I don't regret my career in music one single bit um i've had so much fun and so much so many good things uh, happen and people go oh it's so hard to make a career in music and everything and it's like whatever you've only got one life 
Like I've stood at Maple Leaf Gardens, you know, singing opening for the Tragically Hip. I don't know. They, I think I got paid 50 bucks. It, it didn't, it wasn't the money. It was about the experience and my life. I've had great experiences. So yeah, go for it. Have some fun. <laughs> that would be my advice. <laughs> Many musicians or artists are sensitive, and you talked about the need to develop thick skin. How did you develop thick skin? You know, again, back to the therapy. If you can, if you can get a mentor, like someone you believe in, in your life, that could be a grandparent, a parent, or someone you work with, or somebody who's you know, believe and, and talk to a mentor or a therapist and work out, try and work out your issues. And then I think your skin just becomes thicker along the way because you realize obviously, and you can see it a thousand times in messaging and movies or whatever, that it really doesn't matter what other people say about you. You have to believe in yourself and it's true, you do. So, yeah. As a musician, you can communicate to so many people and influence their lives, what message would you like to convey to them? I suppose it's like I've had, okay, a couple of times in the last few years, people have told me that nobody asks you to make art and the, the art or music or whatever is like a florist, that you don't need flowers on the table. And I take great exception to that because if I'm, sitting down and I feel low um, and I turn on some music, it can lift my, my mood and actually make me feel better, you know, feel better. Like that's a huge thing from just turning on some music. So uh, my message would be to, to make my art important. It's really important and support art, go to local shows, go to, you know, pay artists. Don't just take and get your Spotify. Why pay Spotify? Pay some artists for, for taking, pay some artists that are real and don't have the choice. Maybe they're not capable of really, you know, succeeding as an accountant during the day and playing music at night. Like some artists are really just good at making music so support those people and make them uh, important because because if they uh, make your you feel better that's important so what would you like to say to everyone coming to Stovall for the winter song music festival huh come to Stovall and have a great time like there's some great bands we're all gonna get together and just remember that we haven't been able to do much because of COVID. So just let's celebrate that we're all still here and we can go out and see some bands and support them and see each other and all be in a room together and enjoy the fact that we, you know, people up on that stage are making art and yeah. So have a great time. That would be my advice. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tamara. I'll see you at the Winter Song Festival. Yeah, great. See you then.